Hey guys, welcome back to the Misbehaving Farm. If you're new here, welcome. Uh, my name is Jamie. Please consider subscribing and turning on the notifications. If you're a return viewer, welcome back. Thanks for coming back. Today, I just wanted to do a really quick video on tips for burning beeswax candles. How to get the most out of your candle and utilize it to its fullest potential. Uh, beeswax candles are a little bit unique. They have a lot of really fantastic and unique properties. And with that come just a few little tips and tricks that you need to learn in order to get the perfect or nearly perfect burn from your candle. If you light it and you treat it just like a paraffin wax one, it's going to not respond the same way. So if you wanted to get more information on paraffin versus beeswax candles, just general facts about all of that stuff, I do have another video that you can check out. I will link it in the comment below. That is a much more in-depth video on facts about both of them, but today's just gonna be like a how to light and tips and tricks. And for those of my customers that have purchased candles and it just, this is an easy way for me to convey that information to you guys. So beeswax candles, they're fantastic. They smell amazing. They have a light natural fragrance to them. And the beeswax itself has, like I said, some unique properties. It burns hotter, it burns longer, and it burns cleaner than any of the other waxes. In order to get the most out of it, let's go through some steps and some tips and tricks though first, okay? Step one, tip one. Your candle wick, which is the thing that you light, should always be a quarter of an inch before you light it. So I know I personally, I send my candles out already pre-trimmed to a quarter of an inch. They should be good to go. Once you start burning it, you need to man manage that um, wick, wick length at the tongue twister. And I will touch on that in just a few minutes. So make sure it's a quarter of an inch before you light it. Second, lighting the wick. You should light it at the base of the wick. So where the wick meets the wax candle. And you should hold that flame on your wick for an extended period of time. Normally, if you're used to other type of candle waxes, you just light it and walk away and you're good to go. This one, you need to give it just a few extra seconds to allow that wick to fully ignite and start drawing up wax into the wick. This will ensure that your wick doesn't burn down too fast, that it has a chance to like really absorb all of that liquid wax and, and burn at a slower, more consistent rate, if that makes sense. And I'll show you, I have a lighter here and I'll show you how I do that in just a second. Uh, so like I said, really important to do that. You really wanna make sure the whole wick is totally on fire, like is totally ignited, and there's a little bit of a melted wax pool at the base of the wick. Like I said, beeswax has a very high melting point so no sooner do you light it and melt it, it's going to re-solidify, it seems like. And it's it's not rocket science. It's, that doesn't need to be anything like crazy intense. Just keep the flame on your wick for a little bit longer than you would normally be used to. So for instance, we're going to do this now. I like these longer stemmed lighters. Even like the super long ones are great because you can hold it without having it be really close to your finger and getting it super hot. So these are ideal. I love these ones. So I'm gonna hold it at the base of the wick. And these wicks have been pre-soaked, like they've been conditioned to have wax absorbed into them, but you can see as it, what's my elbow, sorry. Um, as it starts to turn black and ignite, I'm still gonna hold it over until the whole thing, I you guys can see that, until the whole thing starts to I don't want to get too close to my camera. You see how there's a little bit of a wax pool that's burning now? And that was probably overdoing it just to make sure you guys could see it. But the point of that was all of the wick is black and ignited. There's a little bit of a melted wax pool near the base. And now it's lit. <laughs> okay. Some facts we should... some tips we should probably go over. I should probably go over the beginning of the video. Obviously take all of the safety precautions into consideration. This is going to be hot. It's a flame. Okay. Don't have it around kids or pets. The glass itself can get hot. 
So make sure that you're having the surface be protected. Realistically, it's not going to start getting hot on the bottom until it's it's burned almost all the way through. But, you know, take proper precautions, put it on a coaster, put it on a heat safe coaster, something that's going to protect the surface that you put it on because once it starts to get low and that flame starts to get near the bottom edge, it's going to it's going to warm up that glass and be hot and it could potentially burn or scald surfaces that are sensitive or you know, aren't protected. Same thing with, like I said, the glass. Make sure you're handling it without it being hot. If you're handling it, make sure it's not going to burn you. Like this is all basic, <laughs> basic common stuff, sense stuff, right? Remove any flammable packaging. So for instance, I send them all my candles with these cute little tags and twine. Take that off. I, I know I shouldn't have to say this, and I'm sure most of my customers know this, but it's gonna be that one person that doesn't do it, right? Um, remove the flammable packaging before you light your candle. Make sure it's not around anything that's gonna be flammable. I'm not gonna go through all, the, all of the standard safety precautions for candles, because if you're lighting a beeswax candle, you should know how to do this stuff. Just wanted to go over that. Um, the wick should remain centered all the way through the burn. So this one I have, this one's been burning for a little bit longer. I don't know if you guys can see. Let me see if I can turn this down and show you. That's actually better. Okay. If you can see here, the wick isn't quite, let me see if I can do it straight up and down. That might be easier without burning my game. You can see how the wick is a little bit to that one side. Now in this situation, if I see the wick is really off center or starting to burn this side more, because if you turn it, you can see how one side has more wax that's been melted, one side has more that's deposited. It's it's normal to have some wax left on the side, but if you can take, I just have a toothpick here. If you can just nudge it over a little bit, it's really hard to do. Well, video taping. I just nudge it over just a tiny bit with a toothpick. Obviously your toothpick is likely to catch on fire, so do this in a safe spot. But I will just nudge the wick over towards the center if I need to, to make sure that all of the wax around is getting pretty much evenly melted. If you have it really lopsided for a long time, it can burn down one side a lot quicker, leaving a thicker layer on the other side. It's not the end of the world, but again, you're not going to get the most out of your candle. So most of these are evenly centered or centered wicks. I mean, it's, it, there is some, you know, natural aspects to it where it's not always going to be perfect. So I just nudge it so it leans towards the side that has more wax and it'll start to melt that side a little bit more, if that makes sense. That'll help to evenly burn it. <clears throat> When you light your candle, you should be prepared to let that candle burn across the entire surface of the wax. So uh, typically about an hour or more. Slow or quick, like, burns. Sorry, I had a text from my daughter. <laughs> um, frequent, what I was saying was frequent short burns will encourage tunneling, which is when the candle burns like this hole down the middle and it leaves a lot of wax deposit on the outside, which obviously you don't want because you want all of that wax to burn and that will make the life of your candle last longer. So be prepared and ideally you should allow the wax pool, which is the molten, the liquid wax surface to extend as far across the entire candle as possible. And if you allow that to happen, it will continuously burn more evenly as it goes down instead of having like a valley situation starting, if that makes sense. So just be prepared for that. Ideally, you should allow it to melt fully across and then extinguish the flame. Some, some wax left over is normal, like I said. Okay, that's pretty much all of the basic facts I wanted to show you guys. The only other thing is I'm saying when you extinguish it, trim the wick shortly after. So, let me see if this one's ready to go out yet. This one's pretty much 
fully melted, but I'm actually gonna let it burn. I'm just gonna tell you, tell you what you need to do instead of showing you. After you extinguish the flame, again, I usually use a toothpick. I will get some wax on my toothpick, blow it out real quick, and dab it with some wax on my cute. I'll show you, I'll just do it, I'll show you. I'm gonna blow out the flame, obviously being careful not to totally splatter wax everywhere. And like I said, I have a Q-tip here, or toothpick, not Q-tip, toothpick with a little bit of wax on it. And I'm gonna dab the wick with it, just gonna put the wax coating on the wick so it stops burning and smoldering. You can see that was pretty, pretty simple, pretty easy. And it was just a very minimal amount of smoke. I was able to extinguish this flame. You don't want a giant puff of smoke to be continuously going for minutes afterwards. One, it will burn through your wick quicker. And since it doesn't have a flame to draw up the wax, you can actually damage the quality of your wick and therefore kind of off balance the entire burning process. So. I just try to put a little bit of wick or, um, wax over it, and that preserves the quality of the wick, stops it from actually burning down. Then let it cool ish, you know, let the surface of the wax solidify again. Then you can go back and trim your wick to a quarter of an inch. A cold wick is going to be fragile and brittle, so you don't want to let it completely cool and be cold and then try to trim it. I mean, you can, but just know that it, a, a cold wax, a cold wick, oh my gosh, this is a tongue twister. A cold wick is more brittle and therefore it's more likely to break off, which could also cause issues. So once it's cooled down a little bit and you feel like you can safely get a pair of scissors in there, I just kind of get in there and, and snip it off. Honestly, this wick is perfect. I'm not concerned with it at all. It's probably burned to exactly a quarter of an inch. I don't know if you guys can see, but I'm not gonna have to trim this one at all. And most of the can, and I mean, if it's a well-made candle, you should be able to, let's see if I can get this out of the way so you guys can see the, a well-made candle should have a, has a, have a relatively balanced burn rate of the wick and the, you guys see it's like not much more than a quarter of an inch. It should have a well-balanced burn rate from the, from the wick and then the wax melting and obviously burning into the atmosphere, so. That's that. Super long video, sorry. <laughs> Just wanted to share with you guys some tips on how to get the perfect burn from your candle and just some unique facts about burning candles when they're made from beeswax. All right, bye guys.